again. This is Gretchen Frederick from Solitude Wool. This is our last video of the day, and we wanted to show some roving. One of the great things about going to fiber festivals is we're not just meeting knitters, we meet spinners, and spinners are Solitude Wool's best customers because they get breed specific. They get, working from the fiber, how different types of wool spin completely differently, they felt completely differently, they're, when you have your fingers on it, then you really learn it internally, you get, you get it. So I wanted to highlight some of the different things we have when you go to our website and look at roving. We have it divided into two groups, undyed and dyed. And there's a great deal of discussion internally among the Solitude Woolies whether or not this is a good idea, but that's the way it is at the moment. It may change. Um, after the last video in talking about Romney, I just wanted to point out that we do have Romney roving. This is one of my favorites. It is white, natural white wool, and it has all different um, leftover pieces of solitude yarns that we've cut up and had blended in in the carding. So as you spin this, you get little drops of color. And a blue Romney. Most of our um, roving that is color, everything I show here, almost all of it, was dyed in the wool and then blended. That means that most of the wool that's in these rovings, <coughs> excuse me, um, is undyed wool. And I take a, a portion of the fleece and I dye it in the fleece then it's blended when it's carded. And the nice thing about that is it drafts really well. It's not sticky, it doesn't, you don't have to pre-draft, it just flows and it's very lovely and you get a heathered kind of finished hand spun yarn. Um, this is also uh, another long wool breed that is very similar to Romney. In fact, so similar it is Romney. This one is a similar one. It's Border Lester. And Border Lester is the breed of sheep from the movie Babe. Um, another English long wool breed. Long wool breeds are easy to spin, to learn on, because they have long um, staple length, and therefore your yarn doesn't break when you're first learning so much. And then, um, and we have quite a number of colors in the Border Lester, including a bright yellow, pink, there's, um, I think there's still some green and blue, but we might be close to the end of those. <coughs> some of the other um, breeds we have, this is a strange one, this is a blend, and it was because we only had a couple fleeces, I think. This is a blend of both Clun Forest and Tunis. Both of these are shave em to save em breeds that are endangered breeds, but it doesn't qualify for shave em to save em because it's a blend of the two together. But they're very similar, and this is reds and blues blended together, so you get kind of a funky purple, pale or grayish purple. This is Dorset. We have both natural gray and a natural white. Dorset is a down breed, um, originally from England, and down breeds are super cushiony. You can't, this one, we could mail in a flat envelope, and when you pulled it out, it's going to pop back. The label may not look so good, but the wool won't mind it at all. Whereas with some other breeds, if we did that, it would want to felt in the mail. So great for socks. <laughs> difference between pole and oh horn. yes dorset this is pole dorset um, pole dorset is um, a mutant it was developed it's a different um, variety of dorset sheep from the horn dorset which was original but other than that they're just the same but pole dorset are not endangered at all in fact they may be the most populous breed of sheep in America, but you're not likely to find a lot 
prepared for spinning because they're raised mostly for meat. People haven't figured it out yet. Um, a couple things I wanted to show, some interesting things. There are also, there's um, quite a number of Icelandic sheep flocks in the United States and in, in our area, in the Mid-Atlantic. And we have quite a number of natural colors. One of the things about Icelandic sheep is they're a primitive breed, and primitive breeds have the widest range of natural color. So we have a black, we have a brown, we have um, a light gray, we have white, and I think there's even a fifth. But in addition to having four ounce bags of the straight colors, we also have one called Shades of Icelandic if you want to try all four together. And that's both coats blended, right? It is, it is. Um, primitive breeds are double coated sheep. They have a long outer coat that is coarse and doesn't have any crimp and they have a short down undercoat. So Icelandic wool, caracal wool, they felt unbelievably well. So what happened if I put that in a paper envelope? It's not good. We, we try to package these so they have plenty of room to move. Um, <coughs> So both um, fleeces were blended together in this. They're not separated. And we do actually have a tiny bit of merino roving. And the reason we have merino roving and not merino yarn is because we only get a few fleeces. Um, fine wooled sheep don't do particularly well in the mid-Atlantic where it's really hot and humid. And so there are a few specialty flocks, and occasionally we bag off a few fleeces, but enough for roving, not really enough for yarn. So I hope you'll go to the website, look at all the things we have available, because it's probably three times what you see here. If um, you don't see as much as you would like for a large project, chances are on most of these we have more up on the top shelf that we just haven't weighed and bagged yet. So inquire if you would like more. Thank you very much. Hope you're having a great festival and we'll see you tomorrow.